Hey guys, so one of the recipes that you annotated this week was the loaded, uh, loaded potato skins. So real quick, I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to do that. Um, I'm not gonna go over everything in detail because you do have the recipe in one of the files in Schoology. So um, just to reiterate, in your recipe or your ingredient uh, portions are listed on the recipe, but we're gonna have sour cream, butter, um, uh, green onions, uh, we would have chives, they didn't have any at the store today. Obviously right now, everything that's going on with COVID, um, some things are available, some things you just get there and they're not. So um, I actually took the um, green onion itself and uh, used the, um, uh, kind of like the leafy part and really finely, uh, you know, just kind of sliced that up and then took the green stem, uh, basically almost down to the root, if you can see. Uh, basically, like I said, all the way about down to the root, and then just really uh, finely chopped that. And remember, that's going to add into the mixture. Uh, scallions and chives are pretty similar anyway, so just by utilizing more of the, um, the green onion or the scallion uh, portion is just the same idea. Okay? All right, so the potatoes themselves, they, I didn't have large potatoes. Again, it was just uh, what the store had. So, I need a minute. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay, so the potatoes that I'm using, I think the recipe originally called for four large russet potatoes. Um, I'm using six smaller ones just to balance out the portions of the ingredients for the mixture once we get to that point in just a second. So um, I already foiled these. Uh, you'll see in the pictures that are loaded that what I did was prick them with a fork. All right, uh, just to give a little room for when you put them in the oven for the hot air to kind of escape from the potato so it doesn't burst. All right, and then once we prick to them, wrap them in foil, put them on the baking pan, and put them in the oven, uh, about 400 degrees. Uh, these are a little bit smaller. I think the recipe says about an hour. Um, these are a little bit smaller potatoes, so these only took about 45 minutes. All right, so that's just kind of learning the size, um, you know, learning the size and different things that you're going to use for your potatoes. All right, so we are going to um, unwrap all of these potatoes. I did let these cool for a little bit before um, before we are going to go into this part. And that one just kind of slid right out of there on its own. All right, if you have your baking pan, I like to finish the baked potatoes, or excuse me, the loaded potatoes back in the oven. Um, the butter is gonna melt when we do the mixture and it's gonna be nice and soft but I like to kind of get that cheese really, really melty. So I'll put these back in the oven. So before we, you know, slice everything and put them back on the pan, just use a little cooking spray. In the beginning section, you don't need to because you have the foil, all right? So, and then we, we will start putting those back, okay? All right, so I'm gonna get these out of the way first. Um, this one is already sliced. I just wanted to check the inside temperature because these are a little bit smaller than I planned on using. So, um, we will uh, kind of use that. I'm trying to give you a little bit more room here. All right, so what we want to do is um, we're going to slice each of the potatoes. I'm going to first, I'm going to slice this one for you so you can see. And you just want to slice them down the half. A lot of you, I'm sure, have had potato skins somewhere, like appetizer menus, but you just want them to slice them so they're just going to be in half, just like this. So this is your potato. Slice so it down right down the middle, and you want to have two half moons. All right. Um, I don't think you can tell in the video, but there's definitely um, it's steaming, which is good because they're going to be nice hot potatoes. And then as you slice each potato, you're going to want to scoop out the insides, um, leaving some potato down on the bottom. Okay. You don't want to. Um, uh, you don't want to just go down to the skin, excuse me, but uh, you still want, you want to have like a nice bowl out of it. So you can use a regular spoon. If you have a portion scoop or if you have a melon baller, uh, they work great just because that's the whole purpose of them. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and use. Everything's going to be soft enough. So like I said, you can use a regular spoon. Um, make sure that, like I said, let your potatoes cool a little bit so they're not super hot to the touch. And then if you hold the potato, just kind of cradle it all right, like you would um, and like an egg or something, you know, just really small. And then I'm gonna try to do this up here just a little bit. And then just kind of really like gently 
scoop out the center parts, okay? And you're gonna go ahead and just put those into a bowl. If you have a baller, like a melon baller, um, it makes it a little bit easier, right? Because it is meant to just kind of spin, right? Like I said, you wanna leave potato on the bottom because you want there to be potato on the base. The skin is not strong enough to hold everything that we're gonna do, okay? You want, once we make the mixture, ooh, I can't get that out of there. Once we make the mixture, the mixture itself is not gonna totally taste like potato. So you want the potato, the skin, or the outer layer of the bowl, whatever we wanna call it, um, to have a decent amount of the actual potato, okay? All right, um, I'm gonna do one more with you guys and then pause the video just for time's sake and then scoop out the rest and then we'll come back, okay? So again, we're just gonna kind of cradle it and once you get those first couple pieces, actually, let me do this one with a spoon so you can see. Depending on the size of your uh, potato would decide what spoon you have. I've got a tablespoon and a teaspoon. I'm gonna use a teaspoon for this one because um, the potato itself is just a little bit smaller. So you can see that that kind of like lifted that whole section. That's why I like using the baller, so if you have it. If you don't, kind of take the side of the potato and just curve around, almost like drawing. You can see it a little bit there. Like you're gonna draw the section that you want. Don't press it all the way down to the skin, but just kind of draw, um, kind of like the same if you were in sand or like a little bit of mud, and it gives you just a little bit of the like stencil. And then after that, it'll give you a little bit of a base and you can go through and kind of finish scooping out the rest. All right, so, and once you start to scoop the inside of this actual like skin or the bowl that we're creating, um, starts to take shape a little bit. So it's a little bit easier. At first, it's gonna be really, really delicate. And then um, you can see, hopefully, I'm gonna put this right up to the camera. You can see kind of how like how smooth it is all the way through. So it's not gonna be like a mash at all, um, but it definitely gives that like uh, firmness of the bowl, okay? All right, so I'm gonna um, scoop out the rest of these. Like I said, uh, step one, slice it in half, and then scoop out the rest. So I'm gonna scoop out the rest, and then we'll make the mixture in just a second. All right, so I am now done scooping all of the insides, all right? Um, you can see that everything has like a nice good bowl, to, uh, bowl shape. And then add, the more you work with them, they're gonna get a little bit more room temperature. Um, I did make a mistake on one of them. I got a little too overconfident. And um, as I was scooping, I didn't have the skin cradled really well. Um, and I wasn't really supporting it. And as soon as I pressed down um, on the inside, I had a nice scoop going. Um, and then it cracked right down the middle. So I purposely kept it just to show you uh, how easy it is to make the mistake. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way because there's really um, uh, not a big way to salvage it if we want a true skin. All right, um, so what we're gonna do here is now we're gonna to make the inside mixture that we're gonna dollop into everything. And we're gonna take the potatoes, the inside of the potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and leave these in those bowl, in the mixing bowl, I mean. And then we're gonna go ahead and Mix our sour cream in, All right? Um, our butter, you want softened butter, not melted butter. So um, if your butter's coming straight out of the refrigerator, if it's not a butter that is um, whips really easy, uh, just put it in the microwave for like six seconds and that's usually about all it takes just to soften it. Um, I like to kind of mix that mixture up and mash the potatoes that are on the inside before you add um, your other ingredients, before we add the rest of the mixture. The other ingredients, once we have the bacon and the cheese and even the scallions, um, that's gonna just add texture to it. And so since we wanna kinda smooth out this inside, um, you wanna do that when there's nothing else other than the creamy things. So you can kind of see here, all right, it's starting to get to almost kind of like a mashed potato. Um, the warmth from the inside of the potato 
mix with the butter and then mix with the sour cream because the sour cream is so soft. Even if the sour cream comes right out of the refrigerator, it is still going to be um, plenty warm enough once it hits that potato. Okay, so make sure you're working right with the warm potatoes, but like I said before, let them cool so they're not hard to work with, you know, on your hands, but you do want them warm, and then that way it will totally match. Okay, so this is kind of our mixture. Um, you can see, like I said, it kind of looks like, almost kind of looks like butter more than it looks like mashed potatoes, but essentially you want it to look like a mashed potato. All right, so we're going to add in just about all of the... Um, green onion. All right, I'm going to add in all of the bottom parts. Remember that I said I used the top, like the leafy green, as well as um, the bottom closer to the root. So I'm going to add in all of this in from the bottom, and then I'm going to add in just about all of the, um, like the top leafy green of the actual green onion. I'm going to leave a little bit to put on the very top. And then with your cheese and your bacon bits, um, I have bacon bits that I had already um, made up, so I didn't dice the bacon in front of you guys, but just bacon bits are right here. So with the cheese and the bacon, you only, um, the bacon, uh, use about a little more than half of what the recipe calls for, and then we're going to use the rest to sprinkle over the top. With the cheese, you want to use about half of it, okay? I think the recipe says use half for both. The bacon, um, it's really preference. I like to add a little bit more bacon in. It gets the bacon really hot if it's in the mixture, but just like everything, it's gonna be a little bit more preference. All right, so we have that in here, and now we need to mix it all through so it looks really, really combined. Okay, so you can use a mixing spoon. You can use a fork to do this. Um, you can just use like a regular tablespoon, or you can use more of like a commercial kitchen mixing spoon. Honestly, you can use your hands too. I know I say that a lot to you guys. That's your most important tool and your most you know, your more useful tool, I guess. Um, if you are using a spoon that's not that big, like this right now, I don't usually use like tablespoons and teaspoons to do mixing, but it's just what I had out. Um, make sure that you scrape all the way to the bottom because uh, I just noticed that none of my bacon or anything was combined with any of the potatoes that were on the bottom of the bowl. So make sure that you really scrape all the way to the bottom and that you are evenly mixing everything all right, and then this is going to be your inside of your potato stem. All right, so we are going to get ready to load those now. All right, so essentially this is what your mixture is going to look like. Not a super fantastic shot of it on the video, but nonetheless, you can just see it's combined. All right, so now I am going to bring my skins up here, all right, and I am going to start to... Um, load this mixture into each of those, uh, into each of the skins, okay? Now, if you have, a, you can use a spoon. I'm going to use both. If you have a portion scoop, all right, a lot of you are going to call them ice cream scoops. If you have an ice cream scoop at home that has a spring on it, all right, the spring is going to, um, you know, just kind of pop out the food at the end. So it's nice, makes it a little bit easier for you. All right, and then you can just kind of ball, you know, ball up the ingredients. All right, so I'll do a couple with the portion scoop, and then we'll kind of pat those and fix it in just a second. All right, again, I'm just going to kind of cradle it on the bottom. Use my thumb if I need to. Um, the more you do different things in the kitchen, the more you'll get used to kind of using your back and forth hands. Like I'm using my pinky, you can kind of see it. I'm um, using my pinky to stabilize the bowl of the hand that I'm also holding the skin with. So it's just, obviously, the more you guys practice doing anything, the better you become at it, whether or not it's, you know, band or sports or cooking. All right. All right. So I'm going to do one more with this, and then we'll use the spoon for the rest just to kind of show you both. All right. And then with the spoon... Um, all right, I kind of usually take my thumb and then use the back of the spoon to squeeze it in. All right, so I'm going to use, scoop the spoon, mixture on it, use my um, right thumb to push the mixture into the skin, and then use the back of the spoon to kind of push it down. So again... Oh, 
right, and then we use our last three real fast. And then you can go back and kind of see if there's any that are, um, you know, depending on how much extra mixture you have, if, you know, you have any that you could add a little bit to. And we'll kind of squish all of them down real quick right when I get done with them or get done with the other one. Now, mind you, I am going to have more leftover, but don't forget that I messed up on that one. All right, so I really don't have that much leftover um, because I should have one more full skin to load, but I don't. All right, so I'm going to take these and kind of use my hands and squish them and fill them into the actual skin so there's not, like, especially the ones that we use the portion scoop for, the ball is going to kind of stick out to the sides. So you want to push those back in there. All right, move that up there. All right, this one could probably use a little bit more, so I just grabbed a little bit more. And I'm going to put them in here. Um, those of you that are, um, if you're in Foods 2 and you're watching this, this would be a really great thing to practice your piping. Remember when we did piping earlier in the year uh, and just practice those skills using piping bags? I am going to show everybody. Uh, we are going to have one video for everybody uh, looking at piping mashed potatoes and what that means and just kind of like the same way that you uh, see people frost cupcakes, same idea. So that can be done with the same filling and just kind of squeeze it in if that's something that you're interested in. If you don't know what I'm talking about it, but it sounds like something you might do, you can either you know look for something on YouTube, just call it, just put piping mashed potatoes um, or shoot me an email or even Miss Adams and one of us can explain it to you. Uh, you can do it with a plastic baggie. You don't have to have a piping bag. So if you're at your house and you're like, hey, I don't know what she's talking about, but it sounds fun. Um, we can make it work. Okay, so I have um, a little bit of mixture left, but I'm not gonna load these anymore because again, that's my mess up one. So now I'm gonna use the, um, I'm gonna kind of create little grooves, crevices, because I packed the skins in. I'm gonna create like a little bit of groove and just kind of um, before I add in the bacon bits. All right, and that kind of gives it somewhere to sit. All right. All right. Now, I'm not going to use bacon. I'm out of bacon. So I'm going to just do bacon on these, this first half because it's what I have. All right. Um, I'm gonna kind of scoop some of this other bacon and that's on the bottom. Right. So the more you practice things, um, you know, you'll learn to kind of portion out, but we're gonna use half of those with uh, topping with the bacon and then um, just kind of sprinkle a little cheese on all of them, just a little bit because there's, remember there's plenty of cheese in the mixture. And I know a lot of people are, when you get the opportunity to add cheese, you get really, really excited and you wanna add cheese onto everything. And you think like, oh, I need a ton, a ton, a ton. Remember that recipes are balanced for a reason. You can add a little bit more when you see it and you, you know, you really, really love cheese. Um, but, you know, remember that recipes are written for a reason. If you add, you know, two cups of cheese and it only calls for one, it sometimes it doesn't melt the right way and it just doesn't taste the right way, et cetera. All right, uh, if you want to put a little scallion on, sometimes we'll actually save that for after they're in the oven the second time. And then salt and pepper, I have both in um, uh, both in here. I just put a little salt and pepper. So I'm going to stir it up just a little bit and then just sprinkle it on um, over the top of each just to give it a little punch of seasoning. You know, that salt and pepper will just pull out all the flavors that are already there, especially when you have the bacon. All right, and... And I combine everything, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, so the oven stayed on, so the oven is still at 400 degrees. So we're gonna pop it back in the oven. We're only gonna put it in the oven for um, five minutes, all right? That's all it's gonna take for the cheese to melt and warm everything back up, all right? So here we go. All right, so this doesn't have anything to do with potatoes, but what we are pairing our potato skins with tonight are gonna be um, just homemade burgers. So I thought really quick, I will um, 
show you how um, we're gonna season them while the potato skins are back in the oven. All right, so I have a pound of beef here, um, nice and bloody, nice and fresh, which is awesome. Not awesome, that's bloody, but nice and red and juicy, so you know it's nice and good. All right, uh, a lot of you at this point are always like, ew, I don't wanna touch raw meat, I don't wanna touch anything, it's so gross. Just, that's one of the things that you will start to get used to, okay? I will tell you that um, we're gonna put seasoning into the mixture, uh, kind of into the mixture, uh, so you want to either sprinkle your seasoning into the mixture before you touch the beef or um, mise en place it. I'm also going to use breadcrumbs. I have a fourth cup of breadcrumbs right here. So I already have that in the measuring cup because I don't want to grab the breadcrumbs and be grabbing the outside of the bottle while I'm after or while ever, while or after, excuse me, I have used and started to touch the beef. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start to sprinkle some of this in um before i do anything with it our go-to is mccormick's grill master you're gonna see it um just hamburger seasoning so i will actually add that when we put it on the grill as well but we'll do a little bit into the actual bowl seasoning is just something that is a preference and it's things that you have to really like get used to like what do you like um, i like italian stuff so i like a lot of um, garlic so this is a good mixture that i found it is just a roasted garlic and herb. So if I'm not using fresh herbs in burgers, I like to have something that has um, you know herbs in it. And then um, my boyfriend loves spicy. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Cajun seasoning in it too because everything that we eat, not a ton, but just a little bit there. All right, fourth cup of breadcrumbs. All right, you can use any kind of breadcrumbs. I usually buy Italian style. That's just my preference. They really don't taste that different. Um, but breadcrumbs, if you um, are gluten-free or anything like that, just don't add the breadcrumbs. All right. If you don't add the breadcrumbs, then you also, um, when you use one egg, you're going to use one egg, whisk it up. You can see I already have it done. If you don't use the breadcrumbs, don't add quite all of this. Okay. So one egg, fourth cup of breadcrumbs to every pound of beef. All right. So this is our mixture. All right, or that's the beef, and now I'm gonna to start to mix it up, and I'm gonna mix it right with my hands. That's gonna be the easiest way, because you need to make sure that you are separating the beef and making sure that you are getting it really, really coated with all the seasoning and the breadcrumb. So somebody is probably thinking, watching this, why do you add the egg? All right, so if you order a burger at, let's say, Red Robin or you know, even like Texas Roadhouse, and they have really, really good beef and different things like that. Um, you get that nice juicy taste to it. Okay, that is where that juicy taste comes from. All right, when you have different mixtures and we add in a little bit of a liquid or an oil somewhere into, um, into the actual beef, the seasoning is now in the beef. We're not just gonna sprinkle it on top when we put it on the grill. All right, that way it's gonna be on the inside of every bite, not just the outside. All right, so, all right, so this is pretty good and mixed up. All right, before you separate it into, into however many burgers you want, I usually try to take it and kind of clump it all back into one ball. That way, um, if you're dividing it without actually measuring it, it's easier to do from one ball, and I will show you why. All right, so I have my color cutting board because anything with raw meat, I'm gonna always use my orange cutting board. All right, so if I'm not gonna worry about, I do have a portion scale at home, and I know it's um, decently common for people to have maybe like a digital scale, um, but it's also decently common that people don't. So if you put everything just into a ball, the easiest way to measure it is to just do the math on it, like by eyeballing it. All right, so I know that this was a one pound package of meat. So we're gonna do one, uh, one third pound burgers. All right, so I'm literally just kind of going to separate this into, or not separate it, but just roll it into a, almost like a cylinder. All right, that way I can look at it and basically divide it into three even spots. All right, so that is the easiest way to, oh, I missed a little on that side. All right, to divide if you're not gonna measure it out, okay? If you just start scooping, you know, you can, eventually you can get there, but you definitely have to look and think like, oh, is one bigger than the other? 
Okay, so then really quick patting them up. They should, because of the breadcrumbs, they should um, bind pretty easily because of the egg and the breadcrumb. This middle one's a little bit bigger. All right, so I'm going to roll these all really, really fast. All right, make sure that I'm happy with all of them being about the same size. Let's take a little bit of that. My outside sections of my thirds were not quite the same. So the more you roll it, the more um, you're gonna get that nice firm like texture before you put it on the grill, right? And then you can kind of squish it down into your patty. You wanna make sure that you don't have any, um, try not to have any holes. Otherwise, as you start to uh, grill your burger, the holes kind of separate and the burger like starts to fall apart a little bit. So if you see any of that, just kind of use your thumb and push them back. And then keep rolling again. And then once you're pretty happy, um, then just kind of squish it down. All right. And then again, I'm just going to roll it. This one's separating a little bit more. You can see how it's separated right there. So I'm just gonna kind of pinch it back together, roll, and then go ahead and flatten it um, into the pan. All right, so now here we are good. I am going to, I'm just gonna throw these on the George Foreman. Uh, we do not have our outdoor grill uh, ready yet for the season, even though it was beautiful today and I can't wait to get it set. All right, um, I'm gonna make sure that I use cooking spray for the George Foreman. I'm not gonna turn my hood fan on so you guys can hear me. And then I am just gonna go ahead and throw these all three right in. All right, now if you have um, another seasoning, sometimes right now if you're gonna add like maybe a little bit of barbecue sauce or anything like that, um, like a sauce to the mix, you could add it right now. Because I'm using the George Foreman and I'm gonna put the top down, I'm gonna do just a little bit more of the McCormick's hamburger, and then that's it. I don't do anything liquid ever on here because we use the top side of the grill. All right, if I do anything liquid, um, I wouldn't flip it down. All right, otherwise it just gets stuck to the top. So, all right, so I'm gonna put these on here. Um, we'll let those grill. I'll flip it over, even though the top has a burner too on the George Foreman, I do usually flip them. We like our burgers medium well, so um, I'm gonna leave those on, um, on this side while I get out the potato skins. All right, so last but not least, excuse me, we're gonna go ahead and plate. Um, so we do a little bit of uh, Sweet Baby Ray's, right, on our actual bun. So I'll take that and scoop a little bit and then circle it around with the back of the spoon. All right, if you have a straight spatula, it works as well. So you just do a little bit of that. All right, for our toppings, we did uh, provolone cheese today and banana peppers on mine, provolone cheese, banana peppers, and jalapeno on his. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and top that. Actually, I'll let him top it when he gets over here. And then pickles on the side, and then for both of our uh, potato skins, all right, I like ranch dressing for mine, I'm over here. And then um, he likes open pit for his. All right, which I used to think was a little bit weird with the potato skins, but um, once you kind of add the barbecue sauce and the bacon and the cheese, it actually, uh, it actually tastes really well together. All right, so bon appetit. We're gonna have a nice late dinner here. I know, I don't know if your guys' schedules are as off as ours are. I'm sure they are because I'm not getting emails from you guys until super late. So potato skins, follow the recipe. Adapt it if you need to. Follow the recipe or follow the instructions in the video. Same thing with um, using the fresh meat to make the burgers. So, all right, enjoy. Hopefully, if you guys get a chance to practice any of these, send me pictures, send me videos. I've been loving them. Send them to Miss Adams as well, okay? All right, talk to you guys later.